Hey, what's up everybody? BDL44 coming at you with another video. All right, so as you guys know, reports are coming out all over the place um, about the Kyrie Irving to Lakers deal and how uh, Adam, excuse me, Brian Windhorst has said that, uh, you know, basically the, the Kyrie trade is complicated because of course Kyrie has a trade kicker and that's something the Nets don't want to pay. A trade kicker is when a player gets paid for being traded uh, kicks up their salary a notch. I don't know if it's a bonus or if it's something overall. I'm not certain, but they get more money, and um, they don't like that. And also, uh, at this point, it's one of those situations where Westbrook makes 11 more million dollars, so they're not excited about swapping those contracts for one another, um, based on what I guess the other pieces in the deal not looking too good to them. Um, I know THT, if I'm not mistaken, THT is at 11. So we can do Westbrook THT for Kyrie Irving. And, and, and the 27 pick would be involved, I guess, since that's what they want too. So I, I think that, that the Nets are just playing hardball. They're in the midst of trying to negotiate probably multiple different deals at once. Some of those pieces that they would probably want to include in the deal with us, they probably want to include in the deal with KD. Or maybe they think some of the pieces they could use in the deal for KD might help them get more of what they want from a deal with us, Kyrie. So it's a lot going on behind the scenes that probably intertwine just naturally. So because of that, the Nets are probably like, all right, all right, all right, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me just figure out what I'm going to do first. Now, KD's the bigger one because obviously he's the one that wants out now. He's the one with the four-year deal. He's the one that's garnering the most phone calls. So let me handle that first. And then I'll get back to you guys on this Laker thing because that's not going to be as complicated as the KD thing. So if I'm speculating and I'm thinking I'm Sean Marks, that's probably what I'm going through right now. Because everybody's calling me at once about this KD thing. So it's like, all right, hold up. So I guess that's the message that they're trying to send through Brian Windhorse. Um, so that's how I'm taking it. However, um, just looking at the information, I tell you guys, I don't trust nothing right now. I don't trust anything. I really don't. I don't think that stuff like this is as complicated as they want us to think it is because a lot of times it's so much money on the table for certain things to be done to where it's almost like if you don't have certain contingency plans in place surrounding certain things, it could fall apart. For example, if you're bringing KD, LeBron James, and Kyrie Irving together, there's so many different other things that got to come together as well. It's not necessarily something you do over the summer. So if that is in place, if I'm to assume that's in place and you're bringing all of these things together at once on the Lakers... Some stuff just has to have already been done already in my mind. Or if they're agreeing to it now, certain things have to now be put in place to where this is going to be delayed. So I'm looking at it from a lot of different angles that are possible and have no actual knowledge. So it's all speculation to me. But at the end of the day, if I'm reading what the tea leaves say, I still think that the Nets are mulling over different packages for KD. And one of them is probably the Laker package that sends them both to the Lakers, and I'm pretty sure they have better deals on the table for KD. Um, so, so depending on what KD's communication is to them, would determine uh, how much he's forcing his way to one spot or another. Um, so, that's what there is to see there as well. So, in all of my speculation, I, I have that to say too. Um, I think, judging by what's going on here, we can expect to see KD probably move first, as I pretty much predicted in the first place or they will be moved together to the Lakers and uh, you guys can check out some of the breakdowns I, I made on the Brooklyn situation and what they do next and all of that to kind of break down what I see there uh, rather than to go into it again but at the end of the day I think it boils down to Brooklyn has to figure out it, what they really want do you want pick equity for KD because if you want to reset your, your situation in your timeline you can certainly get a legendary pick haul for KD. But if you are not valuing picks as to which you're obviously not trading one of them for Royce O'Neal, then maybe you're not looking to bring back pick equity. Now, could you change your mind? Maybe. Maybe after doing something like that, you realize you shouldn't have. But at the same time, maybe you didn't. So if you're going to continue on this timeline with win now, then you're going to need some win now talent. And I don't think you're going to find the win now talent you want for KD. Because everybody wants to bring KD to the win-now talent because they need to make him a win-now player too. So where can you send him to where you can get back enough win-now stuff to where you leave them as a win-now team too? 
And the only team that came to mind for me, honestly, was the Lakers. With K if we give them AD. So it's like, I don't know if that's what's actually happening behind the scenes. But that's what it looked like to me. When I did the math, there may be a couple other spots. But again, it's like, do they add up in other areas? Like, okay, if I send KD to say Sacramento, and they give me De'Aaron Fox, they give me Murray, they give me Mitchell, or oh, Real Hall. And let's say they still have Sabonis. Or let's say they keep Fox up somehow, whatever. Just follow me here, don't follow the numbers, but more so for what it is the purpose is. We leave them with enough. Is it, is it quite what KD's going to be happy with? And they, can that team be certain KD going to not want out of there? You know what I mean? Like, can you be certain they can bring him what he wants to feel confident that they're the team to keep at four years? If I'm those other teams, I'm not certain I can do that for him. So I'm only going to bring him in as a rental potentially, but I'm supposed to give you a whole lot, but no picks. How does that work? You see what I'm saying? So if the Nets open up their, their minds and say, okay, I'll take back pick equity. Trady, Katie was traded yesterday. But because they seem to not want picks, it's impossible to bring KD to a situation that he can win in. Because we learned that lesson with the Knicks and the Nuggets back in the day when they traded Carmelo Anthony for the whole starting lineup and a bunch of picks. The Knicks didn't have anything when Melo got there and they sucked forever. You can't do that with KD. He don't have time for that. So, how do you trade KD without giving away picks? Well, Anthony Davis is sitting here. You give us KD, we're still a win now team, obviously, with LeBron James and Kyrie Irving if he's coming with us. So it's like, yeah, this is the only scenario where all of that comes together. And guess what? On top of that, it's the Lakers. So everybody makes more money just from the sheer fact that it's the Lakers. So then it becomes a situation where not only do you not see no other way to go, but you also have the looming thing that it's the Lakers. You know how much this helps the whole league? So now you probably just in, by nature have pressure from the league to say, you know what, we want you to do this. But you're like, I can get better deals with Kevin Durant. But can you if you don't want picks and you want to continue to win now? Doesn't it make sense to want to bring Anthony Davis to your situation and pairing him up with, with Ben Simmons? Rather than to try to bring back something else that's probably lesser than Anthony Davis any damn way. See what I'm saying? So even when you remove the conspiracy theory and you read the tea leaves, it still leads back to the Lakers. <laughs> it literally does. If the Lakers are willing to give up AD and everything else it takes to make it happen. For which, if I'm a Laker fan, and which I am in real life, I'm ready for them to do. Should have been done. But it's up to the Nets to, to find a deal that they like better than what it is they have to settle for, if that's the case. And then make the choice to actually pull the trigger on that deal despite the possible, I'm speculating, pressure from the league to, to, to move this man to the, those guys to the Lakers. So the speculation of the pressure doesn't have to be there, though it makes sense. It really does. If I'm Adam Silver, I definitely want the Lakers, and KD and LeBron and all that on one team. That's too much. That's too much to love, man. Are you kidding me? Can you imagine how that looks? It's, it's just, it, it's already something that the media is buzzing about, but if you don't make it happen, it, you realize it's a missed opportunity. So that's that's what I see there. That's what it looks like. That's what it lays out as. All things pointing at the Lakers, which is kind of weird. Not weird, but like, it's like divine almost. It's like, how does all these things point at the Lakers? But that's what it is. So uh, we'll see how it pays, plays out. Maybe guys just want different things for themselves. If Ky K Reed, Katie and Kyrie do not want to play with one another, which I don't believe. Um, then they probably move on to a different spot, and maybe we actually see that. You know, I could see them going to Miami or something like that. That's totally plausible. Uh, but then you start thinking about those packages. Miami would have been the spot. But here's why it's one of those divine things. Because you can't trade Bam to the Nets for whatever clause. They, they can't have Ben Simmons and Bam out of bio on the same team at all on the same type of contract because they have unique types of contracts. It's like to keep the teams from having too much young superstar talent. It's to keep you from getting, say, LaMelo Ball, uh, God, Evan Mobley, and freaking, who's the next young talent? I don't know. Uh, Scotty Barnes come together and get a young team going right now, super team, and then keep them together for the next 20 years. That's, that's supposed to keep that from happening if they all get the rookie supermax, the ones that, uh, what's his name, just signed yesterday, uh, John Moran. So, for example... If my knowledge is correct, John Morant would now not be able to join the Nets as well because of that same thing, because he has that contract. So I think that's how that goes. So 
by the cosmos just so happens to be the other best spot for KD is a spot that he literally cannot go to based on the fact that then you know when now I, I want been I want a player that's going to give me a win now situation if I'm the Nets bam out of bio is the perfect piece the min numbers match and I can't do it so you start seeing how things really start pointing back at the Lakers it's like oh and by the way that's not independent information I got that from Ticket TV so as I continue to take things from others and incorporate it to what I do, I put together. That's why I call a tea leaf. I took that from him. I took that from them. I took that from them. And that's how I get what I get. So if people are like, why are you stealing from other people? So that's how it works. <laughs> that's exactly how I come to my conclusion. So anyway, as I do, I still think there's a very good chance that the Nets will come to the conclusion that the Lakers are the best spot. And the only thing that would probably get in the way in my speculation would be the guys themselves just saying, nah, I don't, I don't think the Lakers are for me. Maybe KD just says that himself. I just rather not. And so I think that would be the snag. But if he would be up for it, I don't think anything's in the way of that happening. I don't think anything's in the way of that happening. Jeannie Buss and the Lakers side of things, I'm sure they can't wait to bring KD in. Nothing would make them happier than to move on from AD and bring in KD. Because they don't expect that they would get a KD type of haul for AD when they do need to trade him. That's the reality of this situation. Even if you don't want to move on from AD, what you telling me KD is possible? <laughs> I can't pass that up. Just like they couldn't pass up AD, they will not be able to pass up KD. And especially how AD's recently looked in things of that nature. We've talked about it's, it's a good trade for the Lakers. And they know it for the organization itself. It's just, it is what it is. So, And for the Nets, of course, as I said, that's a great, it's a great haul, you know. Anthony Davis is a pantheon great player when he gets his self together and what I think the Nets will do would be a clean blank slate for them to build around him and Ben Simmons with a bunch of shooters. And the defense is already in place with those two players alone. I like the Camp Thomas piece there. They would have to find more shooting. I think the Kyrie trade involves us taking um, Harris from them in that bad Harris contract. So that's a little shooting going out. But uh, I think that he'll still, still keep Seth Curry. <laughs> Try to get my words together as usual. And... Um, all in all, that's a nice little court to try to work with Claxton. They just resigned at 10 mil a year. I don't know about that. Uh, but, you know, some of those pieces maybe can move in different directions. Maybe they move um, to some of those pieces because they're movable. So flexibility will be obtained in that situation, I believe, if they were to make a deal like that. Plus that Russell Westbrook contract is going to look nice coming off their books next year. So. Yeah, man, the Nets, the Nets, if I'm in them, I, I do want pick equity. I'm going to give up this win now nonsense, as I've told you guys a million times. I do think it's the best path forward for the Nets, especially after what they've been through in the timeline of Ben Simmons and his health potentially being in question over the next year or so while he comes back to being his best self. So, yeah, the pressure to not win now makes a lot of sense to me, as I've already told you guys. You've heard all of this, my bad. But either way, that's what's on my mind. BDF 44, yeah, man. I'm hopeful that the league will start giving us a little more uh, Laker news because I want my team to continue to improve, get us some shooting particularly. Uh, that's that's what's on my mind. I do like the moves that we've made personally, but we've got to get some shooting. We're very, very deficient there. So that's pretty much it. That's my thoughts, man. That's what I got. I'm going to go get some food in my belly and continue doing my, my art thing. And uh, as more news comes my way, I will be super excited to get it back to y'all. BDL44, thank you all for watching. I'm out.